Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Regina Cahan. I am uh, Chief Civil, and that's my role here today, really, is just to, first of all, thank um, the judges here who are going to give this training for you um, and to welcome you. This is a training on all Zoom civil jury trials. Um, and I want you to um, realize that this is kind of the new normal uh, for a while at King County Superior Court. Uh, it's a natural uh, transition. In June, we did uh, all bench trials by Zoom, as you all probably know. In um, August, we started uh, Zoom voir dire. And now because of the uh, pandemic, it's just not safe for us to have in-person jurors. So we have moved to all Zoom jury trials. Um, we've been doing them now for uh, a month or so. Uh, I would say we've done about 15 or 10 to 15 and they're uh, going well. So this is our time um, to train some of you. I just want to give my just complete heartfelt thanks to uh, Judge Keenan, Judge Williams, and Judge Phelps, who have spent a lot of time uh, not only putting this presentation together, but frankly, um, training uh, the judges <laughs> in order to do this. Nobody, uh, unless you're a techie, you're not comfortable. And we know that We're, we aren't either, but guess what? You just got to get with the program and learn it. Uh, because this is the way your clients are going to have trials. Um, by the time you see this, uh, an order will have gone out that we've extended and we won't have um, civil in-person jurors uh, till the end of March. After that, I don't know, uh, none of us know. Uh, we will have a huge uh, backlog of criminal cases. So um, this is probably your way of getting your civil cases done for some time. Um, so I say that so that you can get yourself ready, you can get yourself prepared. Um, my one other couple of things to tell you is everything we're doing these days is electronic and it takes longer. So just please have patience with our staff. Um, and finally, I'm just gonna be the bad cop here for one minute. Please do not expect our bailiffs to be your um, tech experts. That's not their jobs. They're doing a phenomenal job, but all of this uh, has put so much more in our bailiffs and they can't be um, your, your helper too. So, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Judge Phelps. And again, I just uh, thank these three judges tremendously. So thank you. Thank you, Judge Cahan. Greetings and welcome everyone. I wanna thank you for taking the time to listen to our training sessions today. And I wanna welcome you to our four part training session on all Zoom civil jury trials from pretrial to verdict. Let's talk about what we're going to be covering throughout this series. You've heard from our amazing Chief Judge of Civil, Judge Cahan. My section will be part one on what to expect during your pretrial conference, followed by part two, jury selection with Judge Keenan. And Judge Williams will be covering sections three and four, jury management and lawyer considerations. During my section, pre-trials, here's what you can expect that we will cover and we hope that you will learn. One, the general purpose of pre-trial conferences. What topics are generally covered during a pre-trial conference? Pre-trial conference topics in preparation for virtual jury trial. How to upload exhibits to the clerk's share file system and other pre-trial considerations for the trial court and counsel of record. So what happens at the pre-trial conference for our jury? trial that also is known as a Zoom trial or an all jury or all virtual trial. Well, here are some of the big things that you can expect that your judge will cover with you. Basically, it's the same thing that you would have expected prior to us adopting an all virtual format. The simple thing is, is this case we're ready for trial? You'll be discussing the length of the trial. And this is very important because for cases that are longer than five trial days, 
we generally attempt to give our chief civil judge a heads up that the case will need a possible, if at all possible, a special set with a judge because a longer trial, generally uh, we try to pre-assign those, but we can't do that if we, aren't com if we haven't had an opportunity to talk to you during pre-trial about the length of your trial. It's also important before I go any further that you understand that generally now, we are trying to hold pre-trial conferences for every single civil trial. Generally, you can expect a request, an order will be sent out six to eight weeks before your trial date, in which your trial will, your assigned trial court for that, or your IC judge at that point, I shouldn't say trial court, your IC judge will ask counsel to appear for a pre-trial conference at which time these topics will be discussed. Also, just like before, they'll be discussing deadlines for exchange of joint statements of evidence, exhibit lists, witness lists, typical trial things. You'll be assigned, each side will be assigned exhibit numbers for trial exhibits. And this is very important and it's very crucial that all counsel really do pay close attention to the numbers to which the court is assigning for your exhibits and that you stick to that. As a side note, I just want to point out often during trials, we will see attorneys uh, attempt to admit something as exhibit number 1A or, or uh, 1B or page one of exhibit one. It's very important that you understand how our system as far as the quirk system works. And that is that exhibits have to be admitted as whole. We can't take page six and admit page six of exhibit one as exhibit one. Um, so you should never be admitting an exhibit as far as when you're labeling them exhibit 1A, exhibit 1B, it just needs to be exhibit one. You also will be talking about neutral statements for the jury, but now you also will be discussing the standardized jury questionnaire that we send out to our jurors. Um, and Judge Keenan will go more into that during his section. We'll talk about any ADA accommodations, any interpreter issues or special circumstances that the court needs to be aware of and that you may need the court's assistance with. Any known um, conflicts with the current trial date, such as if counsel have other trials that are scheduled during that time or scheduled to start close in time to the current trial date. Conflicts with witnesses. Oftentimes, experts have been hired to testify during a specific time. So you want to have those conversations with the court and with opposing counsel regarding any conflicts that your expert witnesses or even lay witnesses may have about their availability. You should be discussing briefing schedules for motions in limine. Will those motions in limine be heard by the trial court at the beginning of the trial once the trial is assigned out for trial? Or are they complex enough that you need them to be heard and ruled upon by your IC judge prior to the case being assigned out for trial? Many courts also ask, um, many of my colleagues and I will ask that you also provide a witness estimation form so that we know that if we expect that your trial will be five days in length, that given that there's a basically five trial hours in every day, that you accurately have thought about how much time each of those witnesses is going to take so that you fit into the allotted time period for which you've requested your trial take. And generally, we also talk about a lot of time periods for opening and closing statements, closing opening statements and closing arguments, excuse me. Now, one thing that you can be certain and be um, assured of is that at the conclusion of your pretrial conference, you will receive a written order issued by the court. My colleagues have worked very hard um, to create a standardized order that we all are trying to use so that you can become comfortable with the format. There's one order which I'll show you briefly at the end of this presentation that we all have adopted in, in some fashion or form with a few tweaks here and there. Lastly, before we move on, I just want to reiterate how important it is that Prior to your pretrial conference, you've thought about the length of the trial and what you will need as far as your trial time, because this truly makes a difference in whether or not your assigned judge can possibly keep your case or it will need to be brokered out to another judge. Considerations in this virtual format. 
that you need to be aware of. Well, now we also have to talk about what type of format the trial is gonna take in. Will everyone appear by Zoom? Will it just be the jurors, but counsel and the court be in the courtroom or something else? Typically, you can expect that your trial judge and their staff will be in the actual physical courtroom in order to comply with the open courts doctrine. However, from time to time, we've had to make, make exceptions to this because of the COVID pandemic. But generally speaking, your court staff, the judge and their staff will be in the courtroom. But in an all virtual trial, counsel, witnesses, and all of the jurors will appear via a Zoom format. Also, it also depends on the case. In some situations, if there's interpreters or other considerations that need to be taken in, sometimes the court and the parties and their attorneys will appear, or maybe one side will appear. These are all things that need to be discussed during your pretrial conference. Then there are times that the parties do not, do not have an agreement about whether or not the all virtual format will work for their trial. My colleagues and I, um, we have different ways of approaching this. Some of us request that the parties follow a written motion for continuance in which each side is given an opportunity to brief the issue and the court makes a ruling. Other of others of us allow the parties to make arguments orally at the time of pretrial, and then the decision is made. Regardless of which way it happens, you can't expect that your trial judge, meaning your IC judge, the one that's seeing the pretrial conference, will enter an order with actual written findings and conclusions of the law. Evidence, what format will the evidence take? Now, because we have gone to an all electronic format, you can expect and anticipate that the expectation is that all evidence will be submitted into our share file system and that you need not provide hard copies. But again, during your pretrial conversations with your IC judge, you'll discuss whether this will be the format that's used for all of the exhibits or if some will be electronic and some will be hard copies. Some courts prefer, prefer to have uh, hard copies for their working file instead of the online system. Again, these are discussions that take place. Now, the technology piece. One of the things that also comes up during these pre-trial conferences is just assuring that everyone is familiar with the Zoom format, what the expectations are. Have you talked to your clients and, and is your firm set up to handle an all Zoom, have the bandwidth for participation? Is there someone that needs to have practice with this format before the actual trial date? One word of caution here, the court has limited resources for ability to actually have actual training sessions. That's why we've worked so hard to put a number of training videos on our website that you can use, such as this training video, to explain to you how to use some of the features and what the expectations are. You also can um, use the YouTube videos for Zoom itself and some of the unique features that Zoom has. So how will you know how to upload the evidence to our share file? I'm gonna spend the last few, our last few minutes together discussing this point. Here, I've uploaded what you can expect when you go to our website. You can go to this website and it have, we have plenty of videos here where you can find out information about what's going on and instructions. But included in your pretrial conference order that your judge will send you written are also instructions of uploading, how to upload your information to share file. For our last few minutes, I'm quickly gonna go through some tips on things that you may have questions about to um, about uploading information to share file. First of all, what is ShareFile? It's a shared space where you can share electronic documents. It's just like any other format that you would see. Um, if you've ever used something called Dropbox, it's very similar to that. You can upload pretty much anything in, up to it. You can play videos through it. Um, once it's uploaded though, you need to be aware that you can't really delete it or modify, but no worries. If you make a mistake and you accidentally upload something or you make a mistake, it's okay. The clerk's office monitors what is referred to as the 
working file or the trial file, and then keeps a separate file that's the master file that only the clerk has access to um, so that the record, the official record, which will be available once it goes up for appeal is preserved. How do you get access to the share file? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna email the clerk's office at the DJA exhibit email address that it's included here. And you're just gonna let them know what your case is, the name of the case, which side you represent, and that you are ready and need access to a share file folder. Behind the scenes, the clerk's office sets up that folder, gives you access to the things that you need for that specific folder, and then we'll send you a confirmation email that you now have access to this folder. Another um, helpful tip, um, training tip is if you reach out to the clerk's office and it's getting closer to your trial date and you haven't heard back, don't be afraid to contact your individual, your calendar judge uh, through the bailiff and let them know that you um, have not received access. Unfortunately, like every other organization, we're working with shortage of staff and budget cuts. And so sometimes things get lost and we can assist by reaching out to the clerk's office to make sure that you get access in a timely fashion so that you can stay on track with the order that your judge would have given you for submission. Once you have access to it, it's just like any other type of situation where you drag something into a file. You're gonna open that, uh, your share file, you're gonna open that case, you're gonna drag your exhibit or document into that file, and then you're gonna name it. Again, another reminding you from before, it is very important that you use the numbers that were given to you during the pretrial conference by your judge, that you label the exhibit by the exhibit number, followed by the name, and remember, you can use one, two, you can use numeral numerals, but you cannot, there cannot be a 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2A, it's just exhibit one. Exhibit two, exhibit three, or exhibit 100, exhibit 101, so forth. Again, reminding you, naming conventions are very important for this process. Always start with the exhibit and then the name. Once all of the documents are uploaded, this is just to remind you that the clerk has the master copy, and then there's another copy for trial use that all the parties have, and once exhibits are admitted, the clerk takes the admitted exhibit and moves it to the clerk's master file during trial. One thing, one other tip that I want to remind you of, although all exhibits are uploaded to the share file, do, we still need, if you are planning to use a deposition, you still need to send, just like before, a sealed original deposition to your assigned trial judge, your assigned trial judge. And typically, trial judges are assigned the Thursday before the Monday trial date. Um, if it isn't placed on science standby. And that is who you want to send your sealed deposition to. Do not upload the seal, what's meant to be the sealed deposition to the share file. This is just an example of what you're going to get as um, your Zoom procedures for pretrial and um, explanation on how to use the share file. And lastly, with our last couple minutes, just wanna point out some questions that you will want to cover once your case is assigned to trial. You can talk to your IC judge during pre-trial conference, but often these issues that are discussed here are generally things that are better suited to talk once your case is assigned to your trial judge so that everyone understands the procedures of that particular court when it comes to these issues. Again, I wanna thank you for taking the time to listen to uh, session one of this training module on pretrial conference. And if you haven't already, please be sure to tune in to part two of the training where Judge Keenan will cover the jury selection and parts three and four where Judge Williams will cover the jury management during trial and covering the remote trial itself. Again, thank you very much and good luck with your Zoom trial. <laughs>